of the things we make here in the shop are what they call candy boards and they're used on beehives for overwintering uh, honeybees. And we make them in three different sizes, uh, 5 frame and 8 frame and a 10 frame. If you're, in a, if you're a beekeeper you know what I'm talking about. They're for Langstroth type hives. We make hundreds of them. And uh, what I started doing last year was putting our, I guess what you could call a trademark, on the inside of each one of these candy boards. Because we had a problem with, uh, actually we had some people pirating them. They were buying them from us, and then they were reselling them as their design at a higher price, which is fine as long as, you know, they can buy all they want. What they do with them, I don't care. But what I don't like is this pirating thing. So I started out and just put a sticker on. Well, you can pull a sticker off. It's easy. As, you know, like people that uh, buy things made in China, peel a uh, China sticker off and say, hey, made in USA. Well, that's, that's deceptive. So I'm going to talk about how I'm doing this on the longer Ray 5 laser coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and as I mentioned, I'm uh, trademarking our candy boards. I, I do it on the inside on the back panel, and this is, of course, one of them. And this is for a five frame. Right now I have some uh, eight frame ones running on here, and I do these five at a time. Uh, so what's first thing somebody going to say, well, you know, you can just order a wood burner and then stamp that and have that burn. Yeah, yeah, I could. But I change this design from time to time, and it's very, very easy to change the design here. I, I could do five at a time on here. Actually, I could do six if I did a little rearranging here, but I like working in multiples of five. And I'm in the process of building a hundred of these right now. So do I stand here while this is doing this? No, I don't. I set up five of them. I set it to run. Each one takes about four minutes and ten seconds to uh, laser engrave. And when it's done, I just set another five in there and go about my uh, other tasks. In fact, uh, got a big pile of wood chips back here because I've been drilling the entrance holes on a bunch of boards. And we have a lot of assembly to do. There's uh, rabbits, there's joints, there's angles and pieces and parts and wire bottoms and there's lots of stuff. So there's a lot of steps to making these including the painting which I just hate. So I'm going to take you in here and show you how I have this set up to be able to do this. And yes I could do it offline I've, but because I have different designs of different sizes I've chosen to just have the laptop here. Uh, again with this type laser you can save that g-code onto a uh, micro SD card, plug it in, you can run it offline. So I'll get you in close here and show you what I'm doing. Zoomed in here on the computer screen so uh, without a reflection from the light above I believe I've got it here. So what I've done is I've created my logo and my uh, text and I'll blow this up here a little bit so you can see a little better. And once I do that I group it. This is done in Lightburn. And once it's grouped, I just copy and paste and I make multiples of it and I just stack them up. Okay, so here it is blown up a little bit so you can see a little better. And this here is just text and I've got that set for offset fill. And on my Eagle logo over here, I've got that set for line, but I do two passes and I'll show you the cuts and layers here. The outer orange box you see is, is a tool mark. That's uh, so I can set my boxes. These are two and a half inches tall by... I believe it was six inches wide, which is the size of one of these panels. That way I can make sure that all my uh, graphics and text and everything end up inside of the tool area and end up on the board where I want them to be. Uh, the Eagle at the right is an SVG file that I uh, own the rights to, yeah, which was purchased from another site. And it is set to line engrave, and it's at 3,000 millimeters per minute. 70% power and I do two passes. It makes a nice dark line engrave. Uh, I tried using some different types of fill on it and I tried filling just parts of it and I didn't really like the way it looked. I've got a sample board here with all my little tests on it, which is something you want to do too if you're custom designing something like this. Run some tests on some scraps, see how you like it. Uh, the text is set for offset fill, 4,000 millimeters per minute. 50% power. Uh, this gives a nice good deep engrave that would be a little bit hard to sand off. That could be really hard to sand off. And it uh, almost looks three-dimensional when you look at it close. As I said I do these five at a time here and what I do is I start from center and I have everything set up from center. 
And once I uh, lay my pieces in there, and I've got a couple marks on my spoil board for the first piece, I just put the other pieces on each side of it and go over to the uh, computer screen. And of course, I still always frame just in case something goes goofy. Haven't had a problem here with this at all, but always just in case. And if everything frames correctly, I just hit start and I go do something else for a while while these run. So as you can see, I got a stack of stuff to do here. I mean, it's just doing a hundred of these at a time can uh, become not really tedious until you get to the painting part because as I mentioned, I don't really like painting, but it's something that we need to do and want to make sure the customer gets a quality product. Uh, this here is kind of an idea of something else you can do with your laser. Um, longer laser is ideal for this with a 10 watt head of this moves fairly quickly. Of course, the settings I gave you are for pine. Now, if I was doing this on cedar, I would have to change my settings because cedar engraves completely differently. If you're doing it on oak or walnut or ash or some other type of wood, you need to do a little bit of testing to uh, find out what your what I call the sweet spot is. Yeah, I mentioned that I did some test marks. I'm going to show you a little bit of an example here. Uh, this was my taxi. It came out just fine. I pretty much knew how I wanted this to be set. But for my eagle graphic here with the flag, I wasn't really sure and actually this here is the one I settled on with the uh, number of passes and the uh, speed and power. I had started out trying to do some fill. This is just straight fill. This is of course the, the line again with two passes and I tried a different set, a couple settings with offset fill. I didn't really like the way it looked when it came out. That's why I went back to the line engraved for my Eagle graphic. But I kept the deep engrave for our marking. You can't send that off. That's cut in there pretty good. Okay, I'll show you how I do a reload. It goes back to center because I have my origin point set. Center, I just take these off. Yes, there is an up and a down to them. So I've got this batch done. I need to set another batch on here. And I'm able to set different sizes in here at the same time. Uh, you probably can't see it, but I have a couple marks on my spoil board down there. I set this in and I get my first one set. My marks. Then I just hold that and as I said, I can do different sizes. So I'll hold this still. I can put this one in here next. That's, this is a 10 frame. This is for an 8 frame. I can go back to a 10 frame. Then on the opposite side, I do the same thing. I just add a couple more. There is an up and a down because there's a, a rabbit here for the wire that goes on the bottom of these frames. I'll sh explain that here in a minute. So I get all my parts set like that. And I'm ready to go again. All I do over here is I go and I do frame this every time. Make sure we're staying in there where we belong. Of course, then it returns back to center. I just hit start and it'll start another batch. So what's a candy board? Here's a finished one. Uh, what this is for, if you're not a beekeeper and you're just curious, is this is filled with a sugar mixture over the winter that is set to harden. And this is put on top of the hive. And the, if the bees run out of uh, stores like their honey and stuff over the winter, this is like emergency feed they can access it through this half inch wire mesh at the bottom. Uh, this hole at the top is what they call a winter bee escape. It also serves as somewhat of a vent. You can see here there's a little triangle there. The bees can crawl up through the wire right here and exit right here on nice days in the winter if the main entrance is like blocked with snow or leaves or some other type of thing. Um, I keep very close tabs on our hives because they're in the backyard. But if you had a bee yard that was out remote and it snowed a lot and blocked that entrance, your bees could die because they wouldn't be able to get out to do what they call cleansing flights. This also has two vents in the corners. These corners allow any moisture inside the hive to escape above the candy board. Uh, we use what's called a quilt box on top, which is something else that we build and sell here, uh, which is I fill with wood chips because there's never a shortage of wood chips in this place. And that absorbs the moisture and prevents condensation from forming and dripping back down on the bees. Uh, that in the wintertime, 
they can tolerate a lot of cold. They do what they call cluster. But if they've got cold water dripping on them, um, that's going to chill them and kill them off. So this particular one here has got a little bit different design on my uh, trademark on the back. And it's not engraved quite as deep. I changed my design up just a little bit on this batch. Uh, but I have a few different designs I like to alternate from time to time. That's the explanation of what a candy board is. Well, this is meant as just an idea here of, I mean, if you uh, make projects and sell them as we do, we have several different things that we sell that are unique, you can put your trademark on them with one of these lasers. It's a pretty easy thing to do, uh, depending on what you're going to engrave. Of course, wood is very easy. Uh, leather items you could engrave on the back. Leather engraves really, really well. Uh, Glass is a little tougher, ceramics are a little tougher, but it can be done and I'll do some videos here uh, in the future sometime on engraving on some of these other things. So again, just something you can do. I Like I said, we, we have to trademark our candy boards now because of a pirate. And a little backstory on it, how did I find that out? Somebody contacted us, why are you selling those higher on Shopify? Said, well. I don't sell on Shopify, what are you talking about? And they showed a picture of it and they paid $20 more than what I sell these for on uh, our website and Etsy and eBay and so on. Plus they had to pay shipping. I sell these, for, as of right now, a 10 frame board or an 8 frame is $49.95 with free shipping if you're in the continental United States. So they were all upset that they paid this extra money and that's how I caught wind that somebody was taking our boards, buying them from us, and then reselling them. And again, I don't care, but don't say that you made them when you didn't. That's, you know, I don't like that. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. If you'd like to get one of these longer lasers, these, this Ray 5, this 10 watt head, and there are some other videos on my site on this. I really do like this laser. And yes, I have a lot of different lasers. You've probably seen if you've been watching my laser series, but um, I've been using this for quite a few different things. Works very well. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one.